everyone. Welcome to A Bird of Blab. I'm Natasha Birda. I'm actually an online marketer and I'm a female entrepreneur and I've been hosting Blabs for a few months now and I love getting together with um, other female entrepreneurs and just having a chat, really helping them unpack, um, helping them to just spontaneously tell us what it is that they do because often it's a bit of a barrier for people if they have heaps of skills like Leah, like people who have heaps of mad skills and they can't really feel like they can't nut it down to one thing or anyway it's just good to have an off-the-cuff chat and be unscripted and something delicious always comes out of it and yes and I also just love chatting with women and collaborating and often meet people that I can network with so I just totally recommend Blab to everybody um it's a great way to meet people and hang out and this week I've got the fantastical Leah Wemben Kearns (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> and Sarah McGann, who I haven't met before, so I'm going to start with Sarah because I'm, uh, yeah, because I'm excited to hear <laughs> what your story is. So my okay. first question normally is, um, what is your kind of title that you give yourself, or you know, what is it the kind of work that you do? Um, so at the moment, I guess my title would be mentor and workshop facilitator. Uh huh. So I've been doing some guest retreating on on workshops. So I live in Bali most of the time. I'm in New Zealand at the moment. Um, But, yeah, most of the year, about eight months a year, I live in Bali. So I do a bit of a guest guest facilitating on other people's retreats. Yeah. But at the moment, I'm a trained animal communicator. So... I am, I'm not working as an animal communicator, but I'm actually really just starting to uncover my passion for teaching people to work with their spirit animals and their totem animals and um, cool. integrating them into their life. So I don't really have a title for that. <laughs> um, I'm super passionate about it. Mm. So that reminds, makes, makes me think of shamanic work. Is it in that line of work? Yeah. It is. Cool. Yeah. And when you say you guest facilitate, does that mean you help people who are running a retreat hold space? Um, no. So someone will ask me to come in and talk about um, fem- like I, I have a couple of different topics I speak about. So it could be feminine and masculine energy. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And um, as women, we're quite conditioned to operate in the masculine mm. energy. So teaching women how to drop more into their feminine essence. Okay. And or it could be on divine purpose, um, or it could be on uh, the the interspecies communication and and working with these totem animals and bringing. Them mm. Cool. Actually, it's interesting when you said purpose. It reminded me of a discussion I was having yesterday, where I think it's a smart chicks coterie, and the question was about purpose. Oh no, it was Mitley's group. It's all about purpose. I'm like you know what, I don't really feel clear about my purpose at all. Like, mm. it's always what's your purpose? I'd be like, oh, that's one of those hideous statements that I can't answer. Like, when people say, find your passion and live your passion, I'm like, mm-hmm. And like my <laughs> friend said, my passion is reading books and laying around, like, who's going to pay me to do that? And I was like, no, man, it's not that kind of passion. So I can kind of explain it to someone else. But when it comes to me unpacking my passion, I feel, like, or my purpose, really, I'm like, oh, it's just not clear. Like, do you feel like, you could say, I know what my purpose in this life is and I'm living that. Yeah, my purpose in life. Um, so what I believe, how I believe you uncover your purpose is that there is a thread throughout your life mm. that, will, that will link you. So when I was a child, I wanted to be a marine biologist. Like I was cra- like crazy about dolphins. I did not have boy posters. <laughs> around my room <laughs> room was play, painted like the color of the ocean and oh, every birthday so I'd be like, oh, on a dolphin picture right <laughs> was I was so bad at math and so bad at biology I was number <laughs> dyslexic so I'd flick my numbers around and I just kept failing so I was like oh yes. give up on that I'll go be an event yeah. manager so yep. so but there was this thread and I, I continually had this calling like I often would think, oh, God, I, I, when I was living in Sydney, I thought, oh, I want to go volunteer in the zoo. And then I found out all you do is cut up meat. And I thought, well, that's oh. not really me. So, <laughs> so I decided <laughs> not to do that. Yeah, and I had this kind of like, I, I just had this deep connection with animals. And then I actually, it was so sort of 
it was just divinely guided how it all fell into place. I watched an animal, commu- a woman communicate with the Black Panther on YouTube. Yeah, right. And it was just it was amazing, an amazing video, and I could not get it out of my head. And with, mm-hmm. within two weeks of seeing that video, I was in Singapore training in interspecies communication. Cool. And from there, I found out about the Global White Lion Trust in, um, in South Africa. And within four months, I was in South Africa training with right. the White Lion. So I feel like there is a thread and it, yeah. it, it can be, um, it could be, you know, someone could have wanted uh, a little oven when they were a child or they might have wanted like filing cabinets and they all <laughs> are super passionate about like supporting people with their administration, like whatever yep. it is. Yeah. Um, but I do feel there is a thread and it's actually about going back and through our history and really looking at that thread as a child, mm. like what lit us up as a child. Okay, cool. And I don't think your purpose has to be your job. Yeah, cool. You know, your, your divine purpose doesn't have to be a, your job. But ultimately uh-huh. I believe divine purpose is about being in service. Okay, thank you so much. That really puts it in a much different perspective to how I was looking at it. Because sometimes if I feel I'm not connected with something, I start feeling this pressure like everyone keeps talking about purpose and I'm not really clear and it just starts getting to be this uncomfortable thing that I can't unpack. So that, that's very um, helpful. When you give up trying to find your purpose, it will find you. Mm. I don't feel like I'm trying to find I'm just so curious. I feel like mm. I really live in alignment. Like I feel like it's not a challenge for me. My intuition is crazy strong. So I always mm. end up in the right place. And then try, sometimes semantics or trying to articulate things really unhinges me and I just I start seeking something. And then I find out a year later, oh, you were just doing that all along. So it's probably that. <laughs> probably. <laughs> it's probably that. <laughs> probably no. Yeah. And so if I'm um, – so the animal communication work, that makes me think that you hang out with animals and so people aren't really your target market but – that's probably not true. And so if I was going to have a session with you working in this um, spirit animal guide, or not spirit guide, but animal guide um, kind of work, what would a session with you look like? Um, so my calling is actually not to work one-on-one with people to work with their pets. Um, oh, right. What my calling actually is is to re- teach people to reconnect to nature. Uh-huh. And using totem animals and spirit animals to do that. So there's this illusion that nature is something outside of ourselves, but we mm. actually we actually are nature, mm. and um, it creates this illusion of separation. So um, my my calling is to teach people to reconnect with nature, and one of the ways to do that is to start working with animal guides. Yeah, right. So um, I've been doing some sessions lately, which I've just been loving. Um, where I spend about an hour and a half on the phone with um, someone and we'll talk about maybe it could be like a goal they want to manifest or there's maybe there's an issue um, that they want to to look at in their life and usually it always comes back to a balance of masculine and feminine energy Mm -hmm. but I'll then do is take them through a process to call forth an animal that can guide them and then Mm -hmm. a week later we'll do a review catch up which goes for about half an hour and to really unpack it because it can take about a week a a lot can happen in that session and it's Mm. it's the first time anyone's ever worked in this way um there is a time of kind of integration and Mm. what will happen in that week as well is people will often have dreams or and and a physical animal will show up in, in this physical realm and so mm. you look at the messages that have come through and then how we can weave that into their, into their life mm. that sounds cool I have sat in an earth lodge on the weekend and the woman who held space for us was a shamanic worker and she did talk a lot about animals like we went it was a very long process and we like blessed each log and blessed each rock in each of the four directions and for each direction there was an Seven, like quite a few animals associated with each direction and it was really cool it was really beautiful I loved that and I am really interested in the animal it's so interesting that you 
decided we should have a blab. I'm stoked. Um, I have always had a really deep connection with animals. And I think it's partly because I grew up in the city and there was no nature. You know, like we had rental houses and the nature was kind of like some discarded lawn that no one really wanted to know about. And I would go and like hang out when it rained and connect with the worms in the gutter because, you know, they all got washed out in the rain. Or like if we had a pet, it was just a huge deal for me to be connected with nature in that way. And now I'm quite allergic to animals, so it, it didn't really work out in the long run. But now I get really plugged in by going into nature, um, especially where I live. The nature energy here is just such a powerful teacher and it's very potent. Yeah, such cool work. I think that's all right. I think you're explaining it beautifully. Oh, I've lost your sound. Maybe it's my internet. Mine's showing mm. both yours and Sarah's having poor internet signal. Mm. I'm not sure. If we wait a second, it will probably go. Let me try again. <laughs> oh, the internet. Oh. oh, I might log out and log back in. Oh, there we go. Oh, I there can hear you, can you now. <laughs> oh, you can hear me now. Oh, good. <laughs> I was about to hang up. No, that's all right. <laughs> that's cute. That's cute. Um, um, where are we? Um, I was just saying nature always has is, is wanting to communicate with us. It's just whether or not we're, we're open and willing to listen. And it really is the, those feminine gifts that you talked about on last week's Blab, actually. It was really strong mm. on last week's Blab with mm. um, Bridget and also with Ricky talking mm. about that divine feminine and that intuition. And that they are the gifts that actually allow us to communicate with nature. And so... Mm. Everyone has feminine and masculine um, qualities and elements within themselves and being able to really tap into our intuition opens that communication um, mm. with nature and being able to receive those messages. Mm. That is so cool. I think it's going to be interesting now if we pop Leah on, but are you frozen, Leah, or are you with us? I'm with oh, Oh, awesome. You're just being so still. I was like, oh, no, now we've lost Leah. Because you guys are actually wearing the same colour, number one. And I know that Leah, um, Leah works a lot with, <laughs> with nature cycles as well. So I'm going to now try and summarise Leah. I think I should be pretty good at summarising what you do now because I met you so many You're times. Right, lady. That, um, that you, uh, your mastery is about strategy but it's very much interwoven with intuition. And I don't even want to blow the case on your new thing that you're working on. The, oh, okay, I am. The medical intuition stuff sounds freaking amazing. I mean, the whole thing just sounds freaking amazing. So you should tell us really <laughs> what, what you're up to at the moment. Yeah, cool. Um, so I work as the sole startup entrepreneur and what that's about for me is treating life as if it's a startup because I kind of subscribe to the theory that we're here to have the human experience and as part of having that experience it's to basically test whatever we think our assumptions are um see what comes out of it and then tweak or change things to bring it back into life again and have another turn at it so I do that from an intuitive perspective and encouraging um, people that I work with to do that through guidance for themselves and it was really interesting because the thing that attracted me to wanting to jump on this blab today with Sarah in particular was about the animal communication side of things because um my one of my first wake up calls to the fact that I was intuitive and that everybody is intuitive. Um, but for me, how it came to was um, through cats, and I carry cat as one of my um, well, sorry, as my totem animal. 
So it was really interesting for me, Sarah, when I jumped on your Facebook page to see the work that you've been doing with lions. And uh, it was only last week that I was talking about lion beings in uh, an intuitive sense as um, as a species of, of their own. So um, I totally wanted to jump onto that to talk more about animal shamanism stuff today. But, um, yeah, I guess for me it's really becoming about a focus of being the advert and taking responsibility in your life and empowering yourself through that process. So um, there's a lot around health advocacy for me, there's a lot around business for me, and there's a lot around being the empowered person in making those decisions for yourself in what you want the outcome to to be um, through working through your guidance in your life and working with your own intuition. Mm. So beautiful the way the bloods always come together with the right people on the right day. And so I wonder, Sarah works by having a phone session and a follow-up session. What does your session work look like at the moment? Uh, generally it's over Skype. Uh, I still am doing some in-person sessions. I'm best in Melbourne, so um, but they're becoming fewer and far between as I extend the time in my business um, more about supporting um, a greater amount of people. So I'm doing a lot more group work and I'm doing a lot more um, platform creation work in order to be able to reach more people and help more people. So that's mm. where my focus is at the moment. So one-on-ones are becoming more and more limited, but um, you know, I love them so much because they just allow me to connect mm. so well with people to really understand what's going on for people too at the moment. Mm. Cool. I saw you nodding really heartily there, Sarah, about doing less one-on-one work and more workshop work. Do you feel that as well, that you're doing more group work and less one-on-one work? Um, do you know I actually prefer the one-on-one stuff? because you get to go mm. deeper and um, with the individual and especially if you get to work with them over a month or a three-month program, you can really create that sustainable change. But that's also mm. the way that I prefer to work. So I actually prefer to work with people one-on-one more so than in a, in a group program when I am looking for coaching. Mm. But I also, the reason I'm not in is I also understand um, – you know, time is limited and you 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 can only do so many one-on-one sessions, obviously. Yeah, um, yeah. And so I totally understand the, the, the power of running um, the group sessions because you get to touch more people and re- reach more people. Mm. Um, so I, I see the, the benefit in both. But I really mm. personally love the one-on-ones. Yeah, like yeah. yeah. I guess I have a bit of a group at the moment um and it's just beautiful what that everybody brings something as well I think that's what I especially love about the group dynamic is the way that yeah that we I mean it sounds a bit cliche but the way that we really create something more between us like we're more than the sum of our parts really fascinating Hmm. cool well I wonder if um I want to sort of unpack the animal the animal communication stuff a bit more somehow. I wonder if there's something we can do now. Is there something we can do now? Or can you give us some kind of a bit deeper yeah. walk through? What do you think? I don't, um, yeah. Let's have a, let me just check in. So let me talk about, um, how, Oh, I'm actually doing a webinar in in a couple of weeks' time, and I'll cover this m- more in the webinar. Cool. But to uncover, to really know what your totem animal is. So this is something mm. I will put in the webinar, but I'll just quickly touch on it so you can get a taste. Mm. So um, generally in life, you'll have one, two, one or two totem animals that will guide you through your entire life just like you have Mm. oh I've lost your audio again (laughs) what did we do last time (laughs) it was magical (laughs) 
<laughs> he threatened to hang up. <laughs> Oh, oh, you came you back. <laughs> Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yes. Yes, okay, cool. Um, I'm in a hotel at the moment and the internet is like terrible. So I'm hotspotting my phone, oh, which, my is, God. which is why. Yeah, right. Um, okay, so to really recognize um, what your totem animal is, or totem animals is there's a there's a couple of ways you can do it so you can go through a journey with me but some other ways to recognize what your spirit animal is in life is to any animal that you have felt deeply connected with throughout your life mm. um, any animal that has come to you in your dream because as mm-hmm. you said it is quite shamanic work and as um, you probably know all the indigenous cultures, a lot of them work in that dream time, which and they work with their spirit animals in that dream time. So they'll often they could come to you in your dreams. Um, any animal that shows up for you on a regular basis, like I mm-hmm. have a client I work with, and she just has like literally birds throwing herself at <laughs> throwing themselves at her. Yeah. So she's, you know, birds are all about freedom. So um, so it's really about like what animals show up for you, what animals do yeah. you resonate with, what animals are coming to you in your dream. Mm. And then so they'll be key totem animals. But then if you're working with specific dreams, Yeah, but it's such a funny one. It's an echidna. Like I just have this total thing about echidnas. And at one okay. stage, like, someone gifted me a um a bracelet that had echidna quills on it. It was just so like I just was so into it. So yeah, I, yeah, that's mine. I'd say. Um, are they? Um, are they? I think we call them hedgehog. Oh yeah, it's it's a diff- it's a slightly different um genus but it's a very similar animal like they're spiky and they have a long snout and they have this crazy long tongue and they eat um insects a lot and but they they're marsupials so they're like a platypus i think they're the only two and they have this tripped out way that they reproduce that is like they do an egg and they have a pouch yeah, so they're kind of this odd kind of semi-reptilian, semi-mammalian kind of creature. Wow. <laughs> so <laughs> there's a couple of things. Um, what I love about them is that they're prickly, but actually they're just adorable and cute and soft mm. and gorgeous. Mm. So um, I would be look there could be some messages for boundaries around that for you. Um, and... Um, the ability to show your true self mm. as well and really open. Um, and I'd say they're so incredibly unique. There's mm. here about unique. And the other thing is when you do see them, what's their behavior? Oh, well. well, so the ones that I've seen. I mean, they're supposed to be such a shy creature and they're supposed to like straight away curl up like that's what I was a child that's what I was told but the ones I've seen are always just kind of waddling along and sometimes they're a bit freaked out by me and they kind of scurry off but I have encountered a couple that have just been so chilled out that they're very used to people and they just hang out like they kind of got this weird little way that they walk and I mean everything you said before was totally spot on so this is kind of freaking me out now what is also amazing is that because the, our totem animals choose us, we don't mm. choose them. So they mm. and the fact that normally they would hide, but they've actually come towards you is a key mm. indicator that they are going to be a guiding force in your life. Mm. And if we can learn to take on their traits and learn about their adapt, adaptability and um, you know what their what their weaknesses and strengths are, we can then relate that into our lives. So cool, yeah. Oh, Sarah, yeah. thank you so much. That is freaking cool. I'm going to be on that webinar for sure. Um, 
You should totally drop the in the chat, pop the URL um, for the sign up for your webinar. And Leah, I don't know, I don't have any video for Leah right now, but if Leah, if you have something, you should totally drop it in the in the URL in the. Oh my god! Come on, words. Oh, the link to the sign up <laughs> in the chat. <laughs> but I want to say hi to Anna. Hi. You got on. I girl, did. I finally. You. I ended up downloading. It wouldn't work from. The, oh, I downloaded the app in the end. And yeah, then I had we're to. All on phone. <laughs> it's great. And I had to review my um. I had to review my t- Twitter. I had to remember my password and uh, oh, yeah. and um yeah it's tried a bit to of a um, thing. I tried to put my phone on my little stand and I broke it. Oh yeah, <laughs> I broke it. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah, I'm oh, at my friend Trisha's house and she said to me, "Oh, Mercury retrograde's been crazy in my house 100%. and blah blah blah." I was like, "Oh yeah, shouldn't be a problem for me." And then I got and now I'm in her house and I have my own little private tech meltdown. So yeah, yeah. I'm funny. blaming I'm blaming the stars as usual. Yeah, I'll do that too. They can't fight back. Yeah, so go it's on. Perfect. <laughs> Yay, I'm going to just give a little summary because I don't know if anyone's ever met you before. So Sarah, freaking amazing, cool work, Hi, does animal communication work. Right. And Leah, I think, I mean, for me, she's above you. Um, mm-hmm. Leah is like is an intuitive-based strategy person, startup cool. strategy. I'm starting to hear that word more. So if you could you tell us in like a, anyway, it doesn't have to be succinct, like kind of what your title is if you had one. Or, or what kind of work it is that you do for me? Yeah. I am a birth coach and a mother, motherhood mentor, if I can get my mouth around my words today. <laughs> um, I need more coffee. Um, so I basically I help mums through the journey of motherhood um, from pregnancy, birth and afterwards. I help them to have the birth that they want um, but more importantly emerge from that birth positive and empowered no matter what happens mm. along the way. And then I help mums find calm in the chaos because modern modern motherhood is really insane and, um, you know, it, we can't change that insanity to some degree but we can work out strategies to help us, um, you know, not lose ourselves in that insanity. Mm. Mm. It's interesting hearing you say that the calm in the chaos because there's another woman who's been on a couple of um, labs that I know, Aisha Kennedy, and she talks about, helping connect people to their inner calm. Mm -hmm. I mean, just when she says those words, I just feel like so calm. Just every word that comes out of her mouth makes me feel calm actually. But, yeah, there is something going on there with Mm -hmm. being able to tap into some calm that's your own, isn't it? Yeah, 100%. Mm, Cool. And if someone was going to work with you, what kind of um, session would would you do with them? What kind of work do you do with people? Depends, I guess, on where I'm meeting them in what stage mm. of um, their journey. Um, mm. If they're preparing for birth, then we really start to get into the stories that we tell ourselves about birth, oh, yeah. you know, the subconscious and conscious stories, uh, finding out what we biologically need and how we can support that. Um, I've got a really crazy feedback echo happening. I think I just saw to them. Okay. Is it better? Uh, Nope. <laughs> that's okay I'll try and keep going um helping them to use their biological um processes to get the birth that they want um mm. and also to help them prepare for that new baby life because that's a transition that often gets left out in the process and mm. helping mums emerge from this whole process positive um isn't just about the moment of birth that all the stuff leading up to it it's also about those really important six weeks afterwards mm. Yeah. Mm. I was super lucky and I had a baby moon with pr- well, pretty much all my children right. well yeah I've had four babies my first baby was stillborn so obviously not for him but yeah I've been really supported to just I mean I take a full month moon if I can mm-hmm. to just kind of do nothing Fabulous. and yeah it makes a huge difference to bonding and and just peace and quiet really when there's just so much crazy stuff going on with hormones and the whole thing yeah and getting used to a new mm. person and- oh my god it's huge, it's huge isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's huge and then the motherhood work what kind of um work do you do with mothers um 
So a lot of the mothers that I work with um, are dealing with high needs kids. So we're looking a lot at what's going on for us in those times, the kinds of expectations we have of um, our children, looking at, um, you know, what's what's us and what's our kids and, you know, where Mm. the overlap is um, Mm. and rather than just reacting through the parenthood to be able to work out how we can respond Mm. and um, sort of navigate those moments and, you know, all the craziness, um, so improving communication and um, mm. your self-talk and, and, you know, a whole lot of stuff mm. like that. Cool. Yeah, it's really cool. Cool. I know Sarah just gave us a bit of a tip on how to find our totem animal. I wonder if you could give us a little tip for if there's any mums mm-hmm. on on that on ha- because that is a thing with me. Is I totally get sucked into my kids mm-hmm. and I feel because I'm a freaking empath, it's yep. a pain. Um, yep. If they're hungry, I'm not, like I'm angsty. And if they're tired, I'm falling asleep. And like energetically, I just take on their stuff way too much. So I wonder mm-hmm. if you have a tip for anyone who's crazy too porous like me. <laughs> I relate. <laughs> I do relate. Um, uh, it would be probably connecting really strongly with your body. Mm-hmm. So one of the things that um, empath mums tend to do is we kind of lose the boundary of our physical body and so to reconnect, so do a really quick body okay. scan, feel your feet on the floor, feel your bottom on the chair or you know whatever it is you're sitting on. Mm. Um, become aware of your breath, not trying to change it, mm. just noticing it. Um, and mm. then notice all the sensations that you're feeling in your body because also when we're really empathic, we sometimes feel those um, feel those um, emotions and feelings as well. And, mm. you know, when our blood pressure is, uh, sorry, our blood sugar is low, then we're, mm. you, know, a, you know, a bit more um, agitated and we can get frustrated more easily. But if we can really come back to our feeling and where we're mm. at, um, it does mm. help separate that. Cool. I just, when you said that, I got a sense of how, I mean, now I am trying to connect with other people and I do find I can go through the internet and connect with all of you. So my energy was really um, dispersed. But when you said that about coming back to my own body, I could feel that I could draw that back to my own parameter. Mm-hmm. So I'm going to remember that. That's a freaking great tip. I love awesome. that. Thank you. You're welcome. And I don't know, Shane, the Shane Train 69, he's saying, I'm just wondering how come women put so much pressure on each other about makeup, getting dressed up and judging because women do that a lot and I'm just curious how come it seems to be in the culture of women talking about each other and judging each other so hard. Bro, it's totally not happening in this space. I would definitely say that um, I don't think anyone here is hung up about makeup or how we're dressed. Personally, I have not a scrap on my face today. I'm pure naked face. I've just brushed my hair. That's it, bro. Just wearing my man pants. And I don't think anyone really in this space is, I don't think that's our trip that we're on. So I appreciate your like feminism. That's cool. But it's probably a separate discussion to what we're having right now. I do know what you mean, man. I think that it's a, it, it can happen. <laughs> um, cool. And Leah, I bet you've got some fantastic jewel. I don't know. What will you whip out? Have you got some fantastic jewel for us today? Um, What's floating your boat at the moment? Oh, I have to unmute you. I had to mute because there was, like, feedback for Anna. Oh, cool. So things that are really coming up at the moment is around, um, yeah, okay, this is going to tie a few things together. Um, If you're feeling like, your physical, emotional, mental bodies are being drained, as in you're, you're feeling always tired or you're always feeling like you've got pains in your legs and your arms or muscular pains. Try and think about something that's outside of it's just muscular pain. I want people to start thinking about connecting to that pain in a sense of what is that pain telling you, what's it trying to What's it trying to get you to understand? Because that's our body's way of um, trying to get us to pay attention. Mm. So 
in my journey and particularly yesterday, I had a huge karmic pattern come up for me to release. And it was really to do with stuff that wasn't related to this lifetime. So it was a past life situation where I sacrificed or was sacrificed. And in particular, my femininity was the prize. So um, my womb was taken out, my ovaries, all that kind of stuff. Mm. So through that process, that left uh, a kind of pattern that was imprinted in my body for me to resolve in this lifetime. Now, that showed up in a couple of different ways for me. One of the ways was through endometriosis, uh, and the other way was um, for me to get an understanding first and foremost that the endometriosis was related to the masculine energy being out of balance with the feminine energy, as Sarah was saying before. Quite Mm. often their polarities that people believe are separate things. Um, And more often than not in our very physical world, women will tend to give away the feminine divine energy um, because the masculine is generally how our society, Mm -hmm. at least in first world countries, functions. Mm -hmm. So for me, that showing up of that endometriosis was a big clue for me and my body was trying to tell me that something wasn't right, something is imbalanced, there's something that I need to be paying attention to in order to correct. So um, that feminine masculine journey for me has been quite a strong one. Mm. But the big thing, it was as Anna was saying coming back into your own body check in with yourself and see whereabouts in your body you're holding the pain because these things can be a really great clue for us to understand and I'm not saying it's going to be a major diagnosis of something but it might be um you know my throat I've got a really sore throat well where aren't you speaking your truth Mm -hmm. where aren't you where are you holding back in your life in terms of not saying what you really feel or believe or um communicating in what you really want what's your deepest desires you Mm -hmm. know where are you stopping yourself from speaking out so it's really you know coming back to understand that we don't just have this one physical body that we actually have four bodies and those are physical, emotional, mental, and spiritual, then we can start to get hints and clues from the physical body about what might be going on and imbalanced in those other bodies. Mm. Cool. Oh, I love the tie together. I'm going to yeah. try that on mute now and see because sometimes so it's definitely just what's erupts. been coming up for me. Client. Mm. It's amazing the way there's always something going on like at the moment I've been paying attention to the astrological um, recommendations for this phase of the moon and there's a lot of talk about um, balance in self-care and then I noticed early in the week in a lot of groups people were talking about re-establishing their boundaries like Sarah was just saying about being boundaries I've been doing it as well trying to re-establish my boundaries like these are my work hours and this is when I'm working and I really don't want to be up till 10 o'clock at night (laughs) um yeah. you know posting stuff and then and then uh, like three or four other people in groups were saying the same thing I was like that's just freaky but yeah. then someone else said to me last week maybe you only hear where you're at because that's where you're at and actually there's more going on so I am interested in how much we do are all influenced by similar energies and how much it is just selective I think it's probably a bit of both I I think there's definitely a a much more heightened awareness that's kind of spreading out across um, areas and subgroups of people that never used to be into it. Um, You know, even 10 Mm. years ago, astrology was the butt of so many jokes Um, Mm. and even very rational scientific people again. I mean, even I used to be one. um, They're really getting into it. And I think that there's a, the messages are just getting louder and louder, but then there is that, that also what we notice we attract more of and, you know, where we're at is, you know, what our brain is drawn to. Um, mm. Yeah. But I noticed the same thing and I, but I, I don't know if it was just, I think there really is a, like a push for, especially for women um, and especially women in a form of leadership and any entrepreneur is, you know, you're the CEO of your own company essentially. Mm. Um, it's for leadership to really come back into balance and um, mm. that involves a lot of that, you know, respect of our physical body and, and care and nurture. And I think the divine feminine really is kind of starting to cry out and say, like, I'm the only way that 
this, we're going to save this ship that's clearly going down. Um, mm. Yeah. Mm. That's so beautiful. Yeah, I'd agree, Anna. And what I'm, more leaders. What I'm yeah, finding I think, is I think that everyone's a bit of a leader, really. Yeah, like, totally. I feel like, um, like when I look at my kids, and then sometimes their teacher will say, "Oh, they're a natural leader." Well, I'm like, well, you know, for yeah. me, a leader's just someone's just holding space for other people, and we all do that at different times in different ways. So, yeah, I think we we've, we've got plenty of leaders, but. Maybe we need more inspired leaders or we need more aligned need leaders. More aligned leaders. Yeah. Mm. And, I think, and I think it really is about leaders leading people into themselves, yeah. getting people to understand that the answers are all within yeah. you. But a lot of people don't know how to connect yeah. to that. Mm. And I, so I'm, I'm finding massive, massive trends at the moment. And the trend is about um, seeking external. Oh. That feedback's a bit of one. Um, the trend is about seeking externally and it, it has been like that for many years. Just oh, I know. Feedback is so horrible. It's like, oh, not only do I have to hear my voice, I have to hear it two seconds after I said it. But the trend's been like that for many years. Mm. And... Now what shifted is that because the the entire planet basically shifted from 3D to 5D, we've shifted dimensions and that means that the connections come closer to all of us and it's accessible now more than ever before by us, each individual. So as well as connecting into guidance and intuition, we have the ability to create that healing for ourselves from within yeah. also. Mm. And that's really the point that it's coming to yeah. now. And so the leadership that I'm finding that's coming up and that needs to come up for people is to help people to understand how to do that for themselves, mm. like give them the knowledge to guide them to the process about how they can continue to access things for themselves and then help them heal mm-hmm. the big major chunks yeah. that are in their blind spot totally. or mm-hmm. the bits that, have all come to the surface mm-hmm. that they've got to kind of come through and help to skim off some of that surface stuff. So it's really turning internally for the answers rather than being external for the answers. Yeah. Hmm. yeah so I'm interested in what, what you guys see as the fifth dimension space. I mean, I saw interstellar and that was the first time I'd really heard it said the fifth dimension. And I, I don't know, maybe it's been around, but I just haven't been able to access it. Been able to um, what do you think? What do you think? <laughs> like who's going to go first? Um, Is that Sarah, I think. Can you hear me? Oh, kind of. Oh, that's not going to help. I I've think got it's just that you don't have the earplugs in. <laughs> Here I am trying to get closer to my phone, but I'm wearing earphones. It's not going to help me. Oh, I muted it. I muted Anna. I muted you guys. I'm hoping Sarah will be able to Is be that hearable. Better? Yes. Yeah, that's better. Um, yeah, fifth dimension. So for me, the third dimension. Oh, dear. done it again <laughs> just friend to hang up again and then you'll come back on <laughs> oh bugger it's just not working <laughs> uh, try again no poop oh Sarah it's been so good to meet you <laughs> Such a poop that the tech is playing off. Damn up. Mercury. Okay, I'm going to let these two fight it out. What do you got for me, women? You go for it, Anna. Pardon? What, what's your take on the fifth dimension? Go for it. What, what do you think about that? Um, okay, so my take on the fifth dimension is... Um, is so we've got, we've got the, the, we've got the, you know, the, we all know about 3D. And then 4D is about um, 
uh, like relativity in time and space. And then 5D um, is where we're starting to see um, that we're not actually just like this one plane, but there are multiple planes happening all the time simultaneously. And quantum physics is actually starting to get into this too. And this is that we've got, you know, I might be, I'm sitting in this spot right now, but actually this spot also exists in a completely other um, universe. And there, we're basically um, transitioning into this space where all of these um, extra dimensions are becoming, or these other universes are becoming accessible. Mm. And then if we get into like a, a much more sort of metaphysical um, kind of idea, there's, um, there are some people that say that if you believe in past lives or other lives and that actually they're happening, they're not, they're only a past life when they die. So these other lives are happening simultaneously in these other dimensions, in this completely different, you know, the time space continuum is actually not linear. So it's all kind of happening all at once. <laughs> and, um, we're experiencing all of this all at once and oh. yeah and so then that becomes a past life when we die in that life and we absorb that universe and that dimension and we you know, sort of we continue and they're using that to explain wow. this explosion of um like spiritual growth and personal growth and all uh-huh. that kind of stuff that's happening yeah mm, interesting it's a really holy cow that's a fascinating concept freaky. isn't it yeah, it is giving me goosebumps, so there must be something in there. Yeah. There you go. Thank you. What a majestic way to end. I'm going <laughs> to wrap it up, I think, because that's just epic, um, just because of tech and life. But I'm glad you women made it on. Thank you so much Mind for boy. joining me today. And um, it's great to meet you, Sarah, and it's just gorgeous to bring everyone together and, and hold space for something so beautiful and share space for, around such beautiful pure energy and you know making the world a, a richer and better experience thank you <laughs> um I, if you want anna you could drop in the chat thanks for having our us. pleasure um in the chat drop a link to something anything if you sure. want because the chat comes in the recording if people watch and they want to follow you up I don't have anything. I'm not going to share anything or bother with anything. No, it's just really gorgeous and deep and <laughs> I don't want to, I don't need to say any more. <laughs> it was lovely mm-hmm. to share this space. I actually, um, mm. I'm such a tech, um, what do you call it, like ignoramus. Um, I'd never heard of Blab before, but it's really fun. <laughs> it is Can really fun. Can someone explain to me it what is, these and hands are? We've all got different hands. Oh yeah! If you tap on other pe- on people's yeah. faces, um, it gives them what's called props. Oh. So it's a bit like remember in Periscope you would tap yeah. and give hearts. Well, no, I haven't. Done Just Periscope. like that. And then actually, if you look at someone's <laughs> yeah. profile, um, it will have the number of props oh, that they've ever like received, as opposed to gotcha. um, how many followers. I think I mean, it may have okay. followers as well, but I think it has how many props they've ever had. And it's some kind of status of how awesome you are i guess and um whatever <laughs> it's just kind of fun it's just like awesome. giving them great <laughs> giving cool. the love. yeah and you can also if you ever decide to have one you can rotate through lots like there's a lot of different ways you can use it you can use it like this like a panel discussion is what yep. i would call this but also you could have just me like just one person and i could be like oh come on and i'll help you with your seo and then people who are in the live chat I could put yep. them in that they could sort of call in and then I could bring them on live and then talk them through their whatever okay. problem so that you can do it okay. like that or I mean really any I mean really anything I think it's a really amazing platform with heaps of opportunity yeah. great um, mm. speaking of SEO yeah. <laughs> people can't find it I don't know much about <laughs> SEO <laughs> um they can't. No, no. When you type in, um, like Adelaide Doula, for example, I don't come in. Oh, yeah. yeah. You could have a you. You need a YouTube channel, oh, probably. Is yeah, one awesome. thing you can do for yourself. I might do that. 
um because google owns youtube and <laughs> i wasn't going to talk about seo and also on your website just using um doula the word doula a bunch and mentioning adelaide in your copy but there's also this other thing when you set your page up like meta tags and um the keywords went actually well there's all these other strange oh my god there's so many like the slug and there's all these weird things that you should actually go and fill them in and and write your keywords in and that will help with being searchable but i'm not an seo specialist i i think i don't know who is actually off the top of my head but yeah it's not my department i was making i was making up an example <laughs> cool 